so welcome in this video and uh, here i am going to talk about uh, basic theory behind the relativistic electrodynamics and in this lecture i am going to talk about index notations and uh, these index notations are used by einstein so these are known as einstein's uh, summation convention and the books which i followed in the earlier two basic lectures and in this lecture that is mathematical methods for physicist by afkan and another very interesting book by uh, daniel daniela uh, its title is a student's guide to vectors and tensors so as we know from the earlier lecture uh, that uh, we talk about about covariant and the contravariant formulation so in index notation or einstein's summation form just be reminded what i or what we did in the yes, lecture in the sorry uh yeah let me see what we did in the earlier lecture and let us proceed beyond that uh that's what we did in the earlier lecture so we talk about uh, this covariant and the contravariant formulation and uh, So here the one equation is the covariant and another equation is the contravariant form. Okay, so let us start from there again. from here now we will begin so we have expressed in the earlier lecture that a factor can be expressed as E x e one. It's a basis factor. It is e y e two, and this is basically a contravariant form of a factor. As we know it from that lecture, and the same factor can be expressed as a x. E one and A Y E two, right? And this is first equation. This is second equation. This is basically a covariant form of a vector. So now what we will do? if we are having three dimensional space then x y z are either replaced with x1 x2 and x3 or they may be expressed as x1 x2 and x3 that means here this i is known as subscript and this x i this i is known as superscript and if we are having vector components a x a y and a z or our vector components may be either in this form then 
these can be expressed as a1 a2 a3 or a1 a2 a3 so if we are having the n dimensional space now we are switching over towards the n dimensional space means we are generalizing so for n dimensional space the coordinates become they may be written as x1 x2 and so on xn or sometimes they may be written as x1 x2 and so on xn and similarly vector components can be written as a1 a2 and so on an or sometimes they may be written as a1 a2 and so on an now in terms of these notations the vectors can be expressed as this ax prime ay prime it can be written as cos alpha 1 1 cos alpha 1 2 this is also from earlier lecture into ax and ay and this in the new notation this can be written as in the new notation they can be written as a1 a2 prime this is cos of alpha 1 1 cos of alpha 1 2 cos of alpha 2 1 cos of alpha 2 2 and to a1 and a2 and generalizing this to three dimension this can be written as this a prime 1 a prime 2 a prime 3 and it might be written as cos of alpha 1 1 cos of alpha 1 2 cos of alpha 1 3 and it is cos of alpha 2 1 cos of alpha 2 2 cos of alpha 2 3 and cos of alpha 3 1 cos of alpha 3 2 and cos of alpha 3 3 right and then now it will become a1 a2 and a3 right so to simplify these things let us choose this cos of alpha 1 1 as a 1 1 cos of alpha 1 2 as a 1 2 and so on cos of alpha 3 3 as a 3 3 so using this notation this will become a prime 1 this vector can be written as this component it is a11 a1 a12 a2 means we substituted these values here and simplified this or uh, written this matrix in the vector form and a13 a3 and a2 prime it might be written as a21 a1 A two two A two and A two three A three and next equation it can be written as A three one A one A three two A two and A three three A three sorry A three three A three. This is the way that how things can be written. And let us do one more thing. Since here the index is running over this, this, this is over this, right? This is one, two, and three, and this is one, this is two, and three, and rest of the things are similar. So that means how this can be written as means this thing can be written. in the form 
this is a prime 1 it must be equal to summation over 1 2 3 because it is running from 1 2 3 and a 1 j and a j right this is a way that how this equation can be written and similarly this summation is running over this and this two will remain constant so that means a2 prime it can be written as summation j varies from 1 to 3 it is a 2j aj and similarly a3 prime it can be written as j is equal to 1 to 3 a 3j and aj and let us do one more thing since now this syntax is running over this and rest of the things remains the same so that means this collectively three equations can be summarized as a prime i and it must be equal to summation over j varies from 1 to 3 and a i j a j here it is i and here it is j and this j is known as repeated index repeated index and such a repeated index is also known as dummy index and this i this is known as free index And here i is varying from 1 to 3. i is varying from 1 to 3. Right? That's what will happen. And the very interesting thing that Einstein further modified this modified this equation. What he did? that this equation means a sorry uh, yeah a prime i it must be equal to j varies from 1 to 3 a i j a j where i varies from 1 2 and 3 Here, J is known as dummy index, and I is known as free index. And what Einstein did, he simply removed the summation to make the mathematical notation more simple. And Einstein notes express this in this form. Right? He simply removed the summation. And this notation is known as, as this is suggested by Einstein, who was the first person. So it is known as Einstein's summation convention. And jokingly, what Einstein said that it was mentioned in the book on uh, vectors and the tenses that Einstein jokingly said that this convention is great discovery in mathematics. Right? So, this is the Einstein notation. Now, next thing what is that 
we have to incorporate the partial derivative into this transformation form here i have to incorporate a matrix containing partial derivative like jacobian for that let us consider a case uh, let us consider cartesian as spherical polar coordinates and say this is some point right so it is a x y plane so it is x axis If I consider this plane, say it is x-axis, it is y-axis, and it is z-axis, and it is any point in space. Now this angle is known as theta, and this angle is known as phi. Sorry, no, this not not this angle, but uh, a perpendicular drop from here. like this it's a perpendicular drop from here and now it it was joined now this vector is known as now it is making an angle theta with the x axis let me call it as phi and this is a r vector now here this is x axis or we call it as x cap or sometimes people call it as x cap or i cap and sorry uh, not x but it's a z z cap or j cap people call it as sorry k cap and here it is along x axis so it is either called y cap or it is called uh, j cap and this is known as i cap or people call it as x cap and sometimes people call it as e x cap it is e y cap and e z cap different books will take different notations so need not to worry about that now if we try to look at it and consider the spherical polar coordinates so that means here a vector is acting along this direction and means it is along r direction and there is another vector which is towards this direction so that means this theta angle is towards this direction it is moving towards this way so let me call it as theta cap and this is this way so it is this direction so that means it is the phi cap right so these are the spherical polar uh, unit vectors of spherical polar coordinates now if particle moves from this point to another point say if it displaces from its position to somewhere here then what will happen so let me draw it again see yes, something this may happen it moves from here to here now this is the displacement vector it is displacing from this point to this point so at this time this radial vector will get changed so this is the radial vector it it changed let me call it as r prime cap and this theta towards this so it it, it was little bit changed it is theta prime cap and this phi will also be right so it was somewhere here right so these will also change so these are changing so that means theta is changing phi is changing and uh, theta is r is also changing so that means there is a change 
two types of changes are occurring in cartesian coordinates dx dy and dz are so changing and similarly dr d theta and d phi these are also changing right that means this r is also a function of x y and z this for theta is also function of x y and z and this is also a function of x y and z right so if things are happening in this manner then this dr this change means change in a radial vector it can be expressed as keeping all these things in mind we will use the simple definition of derivative so differential of r can be written as changing r with respect to x and differential of x it's a simple formula of calculus curly r over curly y and dy and curly r over curly z and dz the formula which we have used here let me write down that if we are having a function depending upon x y and z then differential of this function can be written as curly f over curly x into dx curly f over curly y dy and curly f over dz uh, sorry curly f over curly z and dz that's what we have to use here right so now this is dr and similarly the d theta can be written as this d theta it can be written as curly theta over curly x into dx plus curly theta over curly y dy and curly theta over curly z dz and the d phi can be written as curly phi over curly x into dx plus curly phi over curly y d uh, sorry dy and curly phi over curly z and dz so these three equations they can be expressed in the form of a matrix so in the matrix form they can be written as dr d theta d phi it must be equal to curly r over curly x curly r over curly y curly r over curly z and this is curly theta over curly x and curly theta over curly y curly theta over curly z and similarly curly phi over curly x curly phi over curly y and curly phi over curly z right and it is uh, dx dy and dz that's what we are getting here that means in other words if uh, in the form of prime notation how these things can be expressed so to generalize this idea dx prime can be written as curly x prime over curly x and dx curly x prime over curly y dy curly x prime over curly y in the d sorry curly z and dz this is dy prime this is known as curly y prime over curly x in the dy sorry dx curly y prime over curly y dy and curly y prime over curly z dz and this is d z prime it can be written as curly z prime over curly z sorry curly x 
एंड डी एक्स प्लस करली जेड प्राइम ओवर करली वाई डी वाई एंड करली जेड प्राइम ओवर करली जेड डी जेड एंड से एक्स वाई जेड रिप्लेस वाई एक्स वन वाई सॉरी एक्स वन एक्स टू एंड एक्स थ्री इन दैट फैशन this these equations can be written as this is dx1 prime must be equal to curly x1 prime over curly x dx curly x1 prime over curly y dy and curly x1 prime over curly z dz similarly dy sorry dx2 prime is equal to curly x2 prime over curly x and dx curly x2 sorry uh, yeah over curly y dy and curly x2 prime over curly z dz and dx prime Three. It can be written as curly x three prime over curly x dx plus curly x prime three over curly y dy and curly x prime three over curly z dz. So let us write down this in the matrix form. So if we express this in the matrix form, then how things looks like? So it is uh, d x. One prime, d x two prime, and d x three prime. This can be written as curly x one prime over curly x, curly x one prime over curly y, curly x one prime over curly z, curly x two prime. over curly x curly x2 prime over curly y and curly x2 prime over curly z similarly curly x3 prime over curly x and curly x3 prime over curly y curly x3 prime over curly z and this further can be written as dx1 dx2 and dx3 So this is the matrix formulation of this. And now we have to express it in the Einsteinian form. So that means what to do. Let me come to here. In the Einsteinian form, this can be written as that d x one prime is equal to Summation j is equal to one to three. Summation x one prime over summation x j and d x j. Similarly, d x two prime is equal to summation varies from j is equal to one to three. Curly x two prime over curly x j d x j. And the x three prime, its prime should be here, not here, right? Uh, yeah. So it is j varies from one to three. Curly x prime three over curly x j and d x j, right? So. These can be collectively written as d x i prime summation j varies from one to three d x i prime sorry curly x i prime over Curly x j and d x j. Uh, 
right? So in Einstein form, summation form, this summation can be neglected. So in that form, this is uh, this can be written as dx prime i. It can be written as curly x prime i over curly xj and dxj and this equation looks similar to earlier equation which we have derived earlier a i a 1 1 a 1 1 and a j or in other way we can also express this as uh, curly x prime i over curly x j over a j right so things can be written either way either this way or that way all look similar so this is the basically contravariant formulation contra variant representation of a vector now let us switch over towards the covariant representation and that also looks similar so for that let us consider a function depending on the one fx fx by z and in one frame of reference change in this function can be written as curly f over curly x curly f over curly y and curly f over curly z but if coordinates are changed or if you're talking in terms of another frame of reference that is maybe that may be a rotated frame of reference or anything else then what will happen then change in this f with respect to that changed frame it can be written in terms of curly f over curly x1 and curly x1 over curly x1 prime plus curly f over this is simple def this is simple definition from calculus curly f over curly x 3 curly x 3 over curly x prime 1 similarly this curly f over curly x 2 prime it can be written as curly f over curly x 1 and curly x 1 over curly x 2 prime plus curly f over curly x 2 and curly x2 over curly x2 prime plus curly f over curly x3 curly x3 over curly x3 uh, sorry x2 prime and similarly curly f over curly x3 prime it is represented as curly a over curly x1 and curly x1 over curly x3 prime plus curly f over curly x3 sorry x2 uh, and curly x2 over curly x3 prime and curly f over curly x3 curly x3 over curly x2 prime this is the way that uh, sorry this is three how things can be written and in the basic form this can be written as curly f over curly x1 prime curly f over curly x2 prime 
and curly f over x3 prime this can be written as curly x1 over curly x1 prime curly x2 over curly x1 prime curly x3 over curly x1 prime and here it is curly x1 over curly x2 prime curly x2 over curly x2 prime and curly x3 over curly x2 prime and here it is curly x1 over curly x3 prime curly x2 over curly x3 prime and curly x3 over curly x3 prime right multiplied by curly f over curly x1 curly f over curly x2 curly f over curly x3 right now let us move towards the summation form in the summation form things can be written as it is curly f over curly x1 prime it can be written as summation j varies from 1 to 3 curly x j over curly x1 prime and curly f over curly x j the summation is running over this as it's clear yeah here the summation is running let us see uh, earlier diagram yeah if you compare this say summation is running one this is two one this is three so or in other words why we can say that summation is running over this term containing this f right denominator here it is one it is two here we have just switch switch uh, we have replaced this here and here and then try to look at this right this is one thing and similarly for another equation and it is curly f over curly x2 prime it is equal to summation j varies from 1 to 3 curly x j over curly x2 prime and curly f over curly xj and curly f over curly x3 prime x prime 2 and x prime 3 it is equal to summation j varies from 1 to 3 curly x j over curly x prime 3 and curly f over curly x j now these three terms can be collectively written as curly f over curly x prime i it must be equal to j varies from 1 to 3 curly x j over curly x prime i and curly f over curly x j this is a new and same can be written in the Einstein summation convention same equation in Einstein's Einstein summation convention form can be written as curly f over curly x prime i and curly x j over curly x prime i curly f over curly x j right or in more simplified form it is written as a i prime is equal to curly x j over curly x i prime into a i and 
this is basically the covariant form of a vector covariant representation so thus we have expressed covariant and contravariant representation of a vector in the einstein summation convention form right so thanks for watching this video